Take a look at this compact mini PC. I got two of them for $100 each. In this short video, I will take this machine and add it to my Kubernetes cluster, ready to host applications, websites, all in under five minutes. Now you say, why would you even want to do that? Haven't you heard of cloud computing? Well, these things pack eight threads and 16 gigs of RAM and also have very fast NVMe storage. Processor is made with low power consumption in mind, so you get all that compute power while drawing between 10 and 30 watts. You would struggle to get this much compute from any cloud provider on this sort of budget. Not to mention the amount of learning when you are configuring and running all this yourself. Doing this will give you a better understanding of what cloud vendors are selling you. Kubernetes is also extremely popular, especially in the enterprise world. Learning it can lend you new opportunities. Now the reason I got this machine so cheap is that they were originally Chrome boxes. See the Chrome logo right here? But their BIOS has been modded to run any kind of operating system. So take a look on eBay or on Facebook Marketplace and for sure you will find incredible deals on hardware such as this. First time installing Proxmox. Proxmox will help me manage an entire cluster of servers with ease while taking up almost no resources. I will fast forward most of this process as installing Proxmox is very straightforward. It's just like installing any regular operating system. Just boot from a USB on which you burn the Proxmox ISO, follow some basic prompts and it's done. Next, if I go to the IP address that was allocated to this machine during the installation process, I'm greeted by the Proxmox interface. Since this is not my first machine, I need to join an existing cluster. If this is your first machine, you need to click on Create Cluster. Joining a cluster is straightforward. Go to the Clusters Proxmox UI and you should see a Join Information button. Click copy, go back to the new machine, paste in the information, hit join. Wait a few seconds and the new machine should show up in your existing cluster. Easy. Okay, now I want to create a VM that will be my new Kubernetes worker node. I will use Ubuntu Server as the base operating system, so I am downloading the ISO for it. You can download the ISO directly in Proxmox, just paste the URL and hit download. You can also upload images you have downloaded on your PC. Creating the VM is easy. First, give it a name. In this case, I give it K3SW3, since this is the third node in my cluster. I use the Ubuntu Server ISO I just downloaded. I'll give it a bit more storage, 60 gigs for example, 4 CPU cores and 4 gigs of RAM should be enough, and i leave everything else on the defaults. Booting up the machine will go through the Ubuntu server installation process, which is again straightforward. You need to pick an admin username and password, and also take note of the allocated IP address. And one last thing, you also want to install the OpenSSH server, which will allow us to use SSH to connect to this VM. When done, don't forget to remove the bootable virtual disk from the VM. Next, I will install Kubernetes on this Ubuntu server. To do this, I will use K3S, which is a lightweight version of Kubernetes made by the team at Rancher. This is the most resource efficient and beginner friendly way of installing Kubernetes that I found. Like I said, I already have two nodes in the Kubernetes cluster and this will be the third. If you are just starting out, you will need at least two VMs for Kubernetes, one for the Kubernetes control plane and the other for at least one worker node. For the control plane VM, I recommend allocating at least one CPU and two gigs of RAM. To install K3S, I will follow the quick start guide on their website. Very straightforward. In order for the installer to differentiate between installing a control plane and a worker node, it looks for a couple of environment variables. K3S underscore URL that points to the existing control plane and K3S token, which is the secret token that is used to connect to that existing Kubernetes cluster. These two environment variables will tell the installer that this is a worker node that needs to join the existing cluster. You can find the token in the control plane VM at this location.
Once you have the two variables set, you just run the installer command and that's it. This takes care of everything, even making sure that K3S starts automatically after a reboot. As you can see now, the new node appears in my home lab Kubernetes cluster. So what can you do with this? Well, possibilities are endless. From hosting websites to different applications and databases, you can subscribe to see some of my ideas put into practice. One of the first projects I am planning for the start of 2024 is to build my portfolio website. I will make a video series about that. It will be about creating a website from A to Z. I will show everything, and I mean everything, from the design, front-end development, back-end development, deployment to Kubernetes, and even hosting it online. This is what this channel is focused on, learning full-stack development, and I mean actually full-stack. Oh, and I almost forgot, I have a smart plug right here, and I can use it to measure the power consumption of this server. Let's check it out. Thanks for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you in the next one.